Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you're serious about the digital asset space. And let's get right into it today. One take and uncut. So I'm sure you've heard the news in terms of smart contracts with XRP. Absolutely awesome. Doesn't surprise me one bit. Absolutely not. This is already said and done in my opinion. None of this is financial advice, guys. I know I am quite bullish on XRP. Please do your own research. Question everything I'm sharing with you. But again, I'm showing you the facts and I will give you my opinion and kind of speculate because we are in a speculative market and that is how you make money in these markets or potentially lose money all right so 85 percent of the value of blockchain tokens is inaccessible to decentralized applications or dApps or d apps that changes now starting with xrp all right so what is flare we'll kind of go over this again flare consensus protocol we can read more about this if you'd like this is the white paper typically i just recommend you know reading the abstract quickly unless you're really tech savvy and want to get to know it at a better level of course and as we can see this recent news that came on i believe this is pronounced i'm just going to say costin but it might be costin or you know costan who knows launching the constant test network again as of may 11th 2020 so over the next quarter we will set out our plans to trustlessly integrate xrp with flare this will enable smart contracts with xrp on a next generation blockchain with settlement on the xrp ledger guys any and all volume and liquidity that is provided by this will be phenomenal for the xrpl with on-demand liquidity again used by the RippleNet software today RippleNet is kind of the permissioned private blockchain for their institute institutional users but when they use odl on demand liquidity that uses xrp and it does go over the xrp ledger a single time when it does this and the volume is higher and higher value starts moving over the ledger it drives the price up substantially this further increases the liquidity of the network increasing the amount of money you can send and transfer and this is why it will have this type of flywheel effect or kind of that snowball going down a hill and getting bigger and bigger gather momentum and mass this is something that does take time but when you work from the ground up the network effects of this could be absolutely massive just like the you know quotes we've seen of course we see the backing by and you know even other people from the federal reserve backing them on the you know even uh craig phillips and you know uh ben Lossky, all these massive names guys they've some people have left swift altogether to work for ripple it almost seems like you know the backing to this granted they are one of the largest private companies to come out of silicon valley to date it seems like there's a greater plan i, I know a lot of bitcoin maximalists typically don't really understand how the correspondent banking network system works and this is what xrp is going after they're not going to try to compete with bitcoin by any means or you know ethereum i'm bullish on ethereum i think it's going to be phenomenal there's so many projects that are already on ethereum i think the utility of them even working with systems the backing of hyperledger even interledger and other groups and their virtual machines there's a lot of big things coming okay especially as they make that migration to proof of stake but anyways before i keep getting distracted today we're very excited to announce an important stepping stone in getting to that reality the launch of the flare public test network codenamed costin the costin or costin testnet is designed with two goals in mind as a test bed for developers that want to utilize flare with xrp to develop and test applications before risking actual value and to test various functionality and smart contracts that will form the utility of the flare network the flare network will have a two-way trustless integration with xrp again this is modeled as a basic one-way peg whereby a user burns test xrp tokens to receive representative xrp tokens this gives developers and flare a methodology for building and optimizing applications that account for the interaction between the flare network and the xrp ledger very very exciting guys again here's some additional sources if you guys want to learn a little bit more about fba again this is the federated byzantine agreement system and very very interesting i know david schwartz has talked about this numerous times um, i believe even uh bank xrp on his youtube channel has a bunch of the good old stuff from 2015 2016 going over all of this all right so next this is what i wanted to go over this is absolutely massive guys a few connections again i am legion we're not going to go over this article actually even though he has basically all the points in here i'm gonna go over some additional sources and kind of links just to show you as well but with bny mellon one of the biggest banks in the world again um, as we can see here their connections to RippleNet. let me find it they, i mean it's just right in front of you guys these facts are absolutely astounding so bny mellon is the world's largest custodian bank with more than 30.5 trillion assets trillion dollars in assets in custody guys aum assets under management over 1.72 trillion 
assets under management, guys. This bank has established a history. We can see an innovation in blockchain specifically, and then DLT, of course, which is XRP itself, the XRP ledger. We can see global head of emerging business and technology and global blockchain lead of BNY Mellon. Notice that even um, Robert Michnik, you know, left Ripple to go strategically be placed in BlackRock for their blockchain lead. It's just absolutely amazing to see how all these chess pieces keep moving around. All right. So we understand basically BNY Mellon, world's largest custodian bank, $30 trillion in assets. Okay. So now what are we going to do with this? Well, we can kind of see with Ripple Insights, BNY Mellon reinventing payments back from 2016. Just talking about this again, the reinventing payments in an era of modernization, talking about distributed ledger technology, talking about even the cautions, things we have to you know keep in mind, counterparty risk, infrastructure risk, end to end cost, timelines, customer experience, transparency, managing information every step of the way, All right, making sure that this transformation goes well. Right now, as we can see, before I skip around too much, they do see the success of DLT being predicated on three basic criteria. We can see network effect, regulatory engagements and standards, and standards. Okay, excuse me, sorry. I thought those were two separate points. And then again, even talking a little bit about interledger. So quote right here again from BNY. While various organizations and consortiums are working on blockchain standards, for example, R3, again, can settle with XRP, Hyperledger, again, works with Ripple to build interledger protocol, as previously described, there is yet no true blockchain standard, which also impedes progress. Remember, this is all about standardization, interoperability, a single standard of interoperability. So keep in mind, with logistics, once they kind of got that standard storage container for every country to utilize, we saw how you know the efficiency absolutely skyrocketed so ripples interledger protocol ilp guys is not xrp this is actually to bridge these networks aims to solve this you know type of standardization by enabling diverse ledgers to seamlessly interact with each other excuse me i kind of have the hiccups here <clears throat> drinking some death wish coffee super super strong i feel like my heart's fluttering right now but anyways so talking about this guys customer experience as we can see bny has been doing research into this, no question. We can go back into here, and this is I Am Legion's blog again, BNY Mellon, um, right here, BNY, Modernization of Payments and Collections by Josie Ford, Market Management. So blockchain exploration at BNY Mellon, as we can see here, right here, Ripple, Proof of Concept, POC, Test Environment Experimentation with Ripple Connect, kind of the old software name that they utilized for this. So this is, you know, back in the day as well. Now, if there is interest in utilizing this, there are further proof of concepts, they don't really have to tell anybody, by the way, just so you know. So as we can see, Ripple Connect software, payment communications and quoting process, kind of, you know, clearing reconciliation, messaging, networks, efficiencies. And then we can see the Ripple Ledger Network, transaction settlements, guys, finality. This is XRP, ledger based on blockchain tech modeling a cross-border low-value payment use case. So Ripple, as we say every single time, do you see it? Ripple's low-value payments, high volume. That stepping stone, what's next? Well, banks are sending big money internationally. R3 in the world of trade finance says high value. We've seen the projects, Project Jasper, Project Ubin, Project, uh, what was it, Lynx, kind of with uh, Canada. Absolutely amazing, guys. All right. And of course, we know, you know, the connections with BNY Mellon. We know Matthew Mellon, one of the biggest holders of XRP back in the day as well, until he passed away, unfortunately. And I do believe that XRP is not entirely lost. I think that According to, I don't know if it's rumors or what, but it was spread across the country in various points to be held securely. Okay. And then even just connecting again, BNP, Paribas, Paribas, uh, based out of France, another behemoth. They're not necessarily directly tied to Ripple anywhere. They're one of the few big guys that you can't really find too many direct connections. But guess what? You can find a plethora of indirect connections as well. All right. So again, partners of partners, BNP. I mean, they're directly connected with uh, Lian Lian. We can go over that in a future video as well. And that's a Ripple Net partner as well. And this is for international payments. Okay. So now let's talk about RTP. So let's see. <clears throat> So right here, so this is right on reddit.com, guys. Additional research, all the sources available. And this was one year ago. So Ripple, talking about Volante, BNY Mellon, the clearinghouse again with the real-time payment system that came out. And again, now everybody's talking about it. Kind of due to this global pandemic, the need for direct payments, faster payments, 
you know, digital wallets eventually in the future, interoperability, we get it. Okay, Vocalink, MasterCard, and Ripple are all linked. So let's take a peek at this. We'll show a few sources, and then we'll go through this thread as well, just to show you how deep the rabbit hole really goes. And this is regarding the RTP system, guys, that everybody's talking about, all right? So... Right here, Volante Technologies launches accelerator for bank integration on to Ripple's distributed financial technology. Okay, there's no question about this. This is not speculation. We can see right here at the Volante, we've shown plenty of connections. I know Demore Sahami, um, Darren Moore, so many people have kind of shown the connections here. So Volante, no question. And then we can even see, where is it? Bank XRP, back in the day, guys, 2018, Volante Tech launches Accelerator for Bank, Ripple's distributed financial technology, 2015, and again, US-based banking heavyweight, BNY Mellon, again, have joined forces to create and deploy technology to enable real-time payments in the US and internationally. That is what we have to pay attention to. I understand RTP is domestic, so we can focus on the international use case, although we cannot rule out that there will not be additional domestic use cases in the future if banks in these groups and fis have their own intra networks and walled gardens as well they still need a bridge asset so i know many of you have seen this picture you know some of you might be excited but you get the gist again ripple connect just like we saw formerly all right ripple connect the volante ripple plugin manages the receipt and acceptance rejection of fees and fx rate quotes Okay, once the rates are approved, the Volante Ripple plugin initiates the Ripple payment process, guys. Ripple confirms payment back to the beneficiary bank. And then look, settlement is completed with Ripple Ledger balances. This is settlement. Again, there's the clearing, the reconciliation that's kind of coming up with R3 in September with Spunta. That's the first step. Next step, message or not messaging, settlement with finality, guys. That is why I'm quite bullish for end of year to see some significant run-ups. All of the data and information is telling us so. All right. So now we can keep going. Next, we see Volante launches this. Now, Volante, a provider of software for integration, processing, and orchestration of payments and financial messages. The U.S. banking heavyweight, again, BNY, joined forces. We've already seen that. And again, Bank XRP said this. And then BNY Mellon's first initiative was to become the first bank to successfully originate a real-time payment over the new immediate payments network launched by the clearinghouse tch all right so we can scroll down volante and bny mellon team for pay tech innovation links below at fintech future first time ever you know was initiated between bny mellon and u.s bank they will be shortly followed by city jp morgan pnc suntrust who represent the industry's earliest adopters of rtp now remember we've already seen the technology providers for rtp we saw ACI Worldwide. We saw Volante. We saw Finastra. How are they related? They're all RippleNet partners. All of them. Finastra, the top 48 of the top 50 banks in the world connected to Ripple, RippleNet, the software. A single click of the button, once there's liquidity in the network, XRP can be utilized. This is software rollout, guys. We're not in the 80s anymore. We're not in the 90s. You don't have to deal with the physical hardware anymore. This type of rollout and system is ready. I am, you know, that's just my personal belief. I think it's ready to go, and now they just have to simply roll it out. Volante Tech launches Accelerator. We saw this, the bank integration for Ripple's distributed financial technology. Volante Technology video talking about Volpay again. And then Small Ripple mentioned in this video again, speaks about financial messaging trends and blockchain tech. She's the VP of Europe and Asia at Volante Tech, right? You can see all of these things with Volpay, and you can look into, you know, the type of platforms that are integrated with XRP and draw your own conclusions. Right now, I'm primarily focusing on international, you know, cross-border payments. All right, I'm talking about Volante, they even follow Bank XRP, which is awesome. All right, I mean, it's just all right in front of you. I'm talking about Volpay, the real-time payments suite. Plug and play connection to Ripple real time. It just keeps going. The rabbit hole goes deeper and deeper. So the clearinghouse now launched its 24 7 real time payment system, the first new core payment infrastructure in the US in over 40 years. On this channel and many other XRP channels, we have been saying the Swift Network, this legacy platform, the correspondent banking network that, you know, really Swift can't even afford to upkeep and it's not even them directly. They have to use other partners. They're not well funded. This was built 40 years ago, pre-internet, pre-digital era. It's time to revamp this whole system and kind of do this whole tech refresh per se. We've been saying that. What happened in the beginning of this year, you know, a few months ago, and of course, unemployment rates are increasing. We saw all of these articles of banks, all these global banks, Citibank, Bank of America, them all saying, yep, there's a new real-time payment platform updating it. We're, you know, in more than 40 years, it's time. 
this pandemic, this you know market crash across the globe was that also validation it could be a potential excuse to push out this new system. Now, are there other things at play? Of course. Do I know all of them? Absolutely not. But I do know what I see regarding payments and XRP in this financial update. It goes in tandem with all of the news we're seeing with trade finance. We're going to hear more about the BRICS nations, I guarantee, by end of year. We're going to hear a little bit more about the metal market, maybe not a gold standard, but some type of fractional backing for central banks, because guess why? And I've heard this too. If there was ever 100% gold standard again, which there won't be, the central banks would actually have to be transparent with everybody with how much gold there truly is, the actual supply. They don't want that. They want control. So I'm basically purchasing XRP, holding it long term, not financial advice for anybody, because I understand where this is all going. There has to be a bridge asset. There has to be true interoperability in this type of universal bridge asset with a finite supply to prevent spam, um, to basically of course, with Ripple and these other groups to uh, and understand, I mean, the faster payments task force, the, all the connections, guys, prevent spam on the network, finite supply, and there's control of who are the validators of these transactions. It's going to be a lot of countries operating on the XRP ledger in the future. There are so many use cases besides just people are not familiar with the XRP ledger itself. It is not just like a typical blockchain. It is a distributed consensus network far superior to anything we've ever utilized today. All right, so the first ever real-time payment system was initiated. We saw this again, and then Vocalink, guys, another connection. So a MasterCard company adds that at its core, the technology behind RTP, real-time payments, is an evolution of its system. These solutions have been designed to run on their own rails, working alongside and between conventional settlement systems. Sound familiar? I think it does. And then right here, so again, keep in mind MasterCard, is even working with BNY Mellon with R3. R3 is another behemoth. R3 and Ripple. Who are the largest shareholders of both those groups? SBI. Do you see how all these shared connections are working together? Goldman Sachs with Ariba Network. And then, of course, their connection with SAP to utilize XRP for cross-border payments. One of the biggest business networks to date. This is trillions of dollars, guys. You think, why haven't? Why don't we see a $1 XRP? Why don't we see a $10, $10 XRP? Because potentially, they're just waiting for kind of an overnight flip the switch moment and then that type of volume will provide its own liquidity it's a kind of an all-in-one rollout instead of maybe going for 20 percent initially and then five years later they get more market dominance this is looking more and more like true suppression as we've already seen and even the federal reserve what based out of dallas admitted that these cryptocurrency markets during early times these nascent times are highly manipulated and suppressed until the time comes if you don't see it that just means you're not doing your own research and hopefully these videos kind of encourage you guys to look deeper into what we are seeing. There's many people that have been here since, you know, early 2017, maybe even during that first bull run before end of 2017. They see it. They do their research. They don't just watch videos every day. They're informing themselves and learning each and every day, too. If you don't understand anything in a video, look it up yourself and find out. All right. Now, right here, Accenture, again, another investor in Ripple people's names that come to mind of course jeremy light i just did a video on that gentleman okay tons of consulting work worked for accenture even worked for ripple um he's in what is he uh, eu strategic accounts right now i believe but again accenture backing dlt transformation for swift r3 <laughs> ripple it, it just keeps going you can look this up yourself and confirm it relationships and strategic alliances with market leading fintech vendors including aci aci guides aci worldwide excuse me <clears throat> 14 trillion dollars per day in settlement we got fun tech clear to pay first data voca link which we just talked about right above and then ripple and we can see this for ourselves if you guys don't believe it as always which is good accenture payment services right here helping banks and other service providers improve their business strategy technology and operational efficiency to transform their business what do we see relationships and strategic alliances ripple right there Okay, and they have a vested interest, guys. Understand that all these big groups, Google Ventures, Microsoft, all these big groups that are backing Ripple in any way or even backing the Internet of Value and hopefully with R3 with Capital Markets and bridging Uber, Amazon, all these huge behemoths to interoperate, it's going to increase their efficiency and their profits substantially, guys. It's going to be so many more use cases. What was it King Solomon shared the other day? Um, who was it? Was it uh, Amazon? 
putting in a bid or something about acquiring AMC theaters. Now they're looking to acquire entertainment. I mean, with Prime Video, yeah, but really they just have Netflix and maybe Hulu. It's game over. I mean, there's going to be so many people. If you saw the trends, you understand people are not reading as much. Video consumption is going up. So what did I do? I saw that a long time ago and I started a YouTube channel. Now this YouTube channel with, you know, Ripple and XRP is only a few years or a couple years old, really. But I've had other channels in the past. Nothing changes, guys. You have to see the trends and go for it. Just like I say in almost every video now because you guys like it. Don't follow the money. You have to beat it. You have to anticipate where the market is going. Look at the trends. What other trends are we seeing? We are seeing virtual reality. We are seeing augmented reality. We are seeing, you know, 3D printing. We are seeing cybersecurity, um, even, you know, quantum computing and all of the security with that. There's blockchain. Of course, I'm paying attention to the payments in particular now with the Internet of Value. There's the Internet of Things. There's, you know, all these new applications that kids are utilizing. You have to kind of see these patterns and anticipate them if you're looking to make money or, you know, simply to kind of solve a real problem. Do not just try to create a company and, you know, make up a problem to solve it. You have to basically from the beginning understand the problem you're solving and go all in on that specific problem. Do not spread yourself too thin. Just like, again, former Yahoo executive and current CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, has talked about the peanut butter manifesto. Let me get a sip of coffee here. But, I mean, hopefully I'm shedding some light, guys. Hopefully, you know, I'm encouraging you guys to question a few things here because there's just too much going on, okay? There has to be a bridge asset. Listen more to, uh, what was that recent hearing with uh, John Carlo um, and, you know, all those people with related to the SEC, Jay Clayton, we got the CFTC, the Trump administration. When you realize that just like messaging and reconciliation and clearing is the first step, and then we have settlement with XRP later on, it's the same concept with improving domestic rails, okay? In the U.S. here, we're improving our internal country or, you know, their own operational efficiency and communication with messaging, okay, with the RTP platform and the clearinghouse. And then what do you next work on? International payments. Improve where you live first and then work on interoperating with those groups. You can see this existing everywhere, okay? There's stepping stones. It is how you build that foundation. Remember in the previous video, if you haven't seen it, we showed how XRP, specifically Ripple is working with XRP to be that foundational layer for the payments pyramid, that you know hierarchical structure. There's just so much, and I could talk about this forever because it excites me unbelievably, okay? I mean, right here, unlocking value. Just reminding me of, you know, all the true value for the internet of value. This is not just money. This is not trillions of dollars of fiat, okay? We're talking about tokenization of assets. You're talking about other cryptocurrencies that are going to be solving true use cases. Now, there's going to be a bunch that are scams or die or don't have the funding, but the ones that I'm watching, I mean... There's probably going to be a good 100 that survive and thrive, and they're all different use cases. And guess what? Stellar is not in competition XRP, okay? Lumens, their project, their token. Jed McCaleb, even of the Stellar Foundation, has said, and he was basically one of the helpers with the X, with XRP and Ripple Labs back in the day, like one of the founders with Chris Larson. He said, no, they're going after different markets entirely. He said that in a recent video. Um, I think there's going to be so many things with, you know, decentralized oracles, with Chainlink, I think with STOs or, you know, tokenizing assets on the ledger as well. I think that, you know, with Securitize working with even Tezos and tokenizing commercial real estate with billions of dollars on the way, it's very exciting. You know, the folks over at Cardano, if they build and succeed or VeChain and their integrations and their connections with China and the supply chain, it's really, really exciting. And we don't necessarily know you know, how it's all going to end up in terms of market share, but we can see kind of which projects seem like winners and anticipate that and diversify. And if you diversify correctly in this market matures in the next year, five years, even 10 years, which is like max for me, it's, it's game over. This is one of the biggest wealth transfers of true digitization going to value, not just information. Okay. We already have information. And it's pretty much an open landscape. We have creators and applications like YouTube and Facebook and can all communicate and marketplaces and business, businesses built on top of them. But now we can do this with value and it flips that entire model of investing in financial inclusion on its head. And those, can, those that can recognize these patterns or maybe just got lucky and found out about it from a friend have the opportunity to do something big with their life. And hopefully you guys give back as well. 
I think this will lead to a Cambrian explosion. Okay, interoperability protocols, smart contracts, a ledger, and a bridge asset to do all of that. All right, guys, I've been ranting enough. Remember to check the links in the description with for all things related to making money with cryptocurrency. Shout out to Jamie XRP, Mikey, Crypto Beginner, Philip Miles, Ken Melendez, and all other top channel members. Appreciate all of you guys that hit the like button, share this video around, and until next time.